The world of US gymnastics has been rocked by an investigation that says hundreds of children have been sexually abused over the past 20 years. The nine-month-long investigation was done by the Indy Star, a local Indianapolis paper that's part of the wider USA Today network. Investigators trawled through hundreds of police reports and found that at least 368 gymnasts have filed some form of sexual abuse claim against their coaches, gym owners and other members of staff. But the investigators fear that number could in fact be much higher. Among the accusations are children as young as six years old reportedly being photographed nude, 12 year olds being molested during therapy sessions and individuals as young as 14 being forced to have sexual intercourse on a daily basis. But one of the most damning accusations against the sport is that the predatory coaches were allowed to move from one gym to the next without the proper oversight in place to catch them. And even more worrying, that the organisation in place to protect those athletes was failing to report allegations of abuse at all. We're joined now by Marissa Kwiatkowski, one of the authors of the reports. Now, first of all, Marissa, thank you so much for joining us. Could you very quickly tell thank us you. how this investigation came about? So we were working on an investigation relating to failures to report child sexual abuse in schools here in the Indianapolis area. And as we were doing that reporting, we were told that we should look at USA Gymnastics, the sport's national governing body here, and see how they were handling sexual abuse allegations. Now, as we saw a little bit earlier, the actual scale of this is really quite frightening. Do you have any idea just how big this could actually turn out to be? So the challenge with any kind of sexual abuse allegation is that we don't know how many people there are out there. Sexual abuse in general is a very underreported crime, and the experts tell us that you know, anywhere from 60% of sexual abuse allegations to even up to 80% of allegations are never reported at all. So the number, the 368 number, is the best estimate that we can give based on our reporting, which is pouring over court records and police records and things like that. Well, talking about those figures in your published articles, you were saying that USA Gymnastics have basically dismissed themselves of any responsibility with member gyms and that they failed to report and even follow up on some of those allegations that came through. So how deep are they in all of this? So the organization has not talked very publicly about how it handles allegations of sexual abuse, but there was a court case in Georgia, and as part of that court case, there were depositions taken relating to top USA Gymnastics officials, both current and former. And as part of those depositions, the officials described a policy of the executive office that they would dismiss allegations of sexual abuse involving coaches unless those allegations were signed by a victim, a victim's parent, or an eyewitness to the abuse. Now, what is the most important thing that USA Gymnastics or any other authority can do to make children feel safe in these sporting or as part of these sport organizations? So child advocates and experts in the legal system have told us that there are a couple of things that could be done, and this doesn't just apply to USA Gymnastics, but really any organization that works with children. First, the law in many states in the U.S. is if you have any reason to believe that a child is being abused or neglected, immediately report it to authorities, to police or to Child Protective Services, and let them do an investigation and figure it out. The other piece of that that experts tell us would be sort of best practices are some sort of tracking mechanism for a potential predator such as a coach or a gym owner or a doctor or someone like that where these allegations are made, then people can know that there have been these allegations made against them. So those are just some of the many things that could be done to at least forestall some of these allegations or prevent further crimes. Now, we're also seeing a similarly, similarly troubling situation happening over in British football. Do you think that these types of investigations should be done across the board in all different kinds of sports? And do you also think that we'll be seeing more of this pop up in other sports as well across the world? So again, the issue of sexual abuse is not exclusive to gymnastics. It's not exclusive to swimming or soccer or football or any other sport. 
the reality is, and, and what experts have told us again and again, is that people who have bad intentions or who want to hurt children will put themselves in positions where they work with children to try to do this. So the suggestions that have been made for USA Gymnastics or other organizations that work with children can really go across the board. This is a problem everywhere. It's a societal problem. And so there are lots of discussions about what are the best practices to prevent it across the board and not just in, as our investigation found, USA Gymnastics. Well, Marissa, thank you so much for speaking with us and for shedding some light on the topic.